This is Halo 1. This is Halo 2. And this is Halo 3. There are many other Halo games, but this is the original trilogy. This is the alleged Halo killer that you are about to see. Hayes. Leagues apart, <laughs> aren't they? In order to fully understand what goes on, one must fully realize what the story here is. Hayes is a PlayStation 3 exclusive title, originally set to release on the Xbox 360 and PC platforms as well. But at one point, this game, spearheaded by Ubisoft, actually taking control over, but we'll get to that, was set to only release on Sony's console. This game followed up with a considerable amount of hype and the traditional E3 trailer shenanigans we all know and love. Seriously, compare them side by side and they're almost totally separate games. This was the game that would be the Halo Killer, dubbed that title, no less. But before we continue, one must understand what the term Halo Killer truly is. See, a Halo Killer involves any game trumping the Halo series, pretty self-explanatory, but we need to know what Halo actually does for it to be killed off by other franchises. Halo does first-person shooters well. It's a game that pits you in the shoes of an iconic hero and actually makes you feel like you are playing a super soldier, you know, the character that you are portrayed as. You're not outclassed, and you can use any weapon on the field in any way you like. You have to dance around the battlefield even with perfect finesse at times. In a way, it's reminiscent of what makes classic shooters like Doom or Quake work, but at the same time, it provides its own quirks to its gameplay. Halo not only has sh solid shooter mechanics, but it also comes featured with solid vehicular combat. And all these work very, very well, and the transition between both types of gameplay is always natural. Add that to a very rock-solid multiplayer component, and you have a really good first-person shooter. Alongside that great gameplay, though, you also come across a pretty interesting story and a ton of lore in this universe that it's set around in. You know, you don't, you, you, ha you have this really great space marine opera, so to speak. Um, sure, it has some <laughs> questionable moments here and there, but it is pretty rock solid and it does make for a very worthwhile package. Halo itself, love it or hate it, the games are good and it definitely has a place up there with some of the greats. Though now we have a Halo killer here and Haze is, well, by no means a Halo killer. If you want to go back, we can use Killzone as an example, although we'll get to that a little later in the video. Hayes, following a massive hype, was set to be a juggernaut against Halo, specifically the third title. The game releases almost a year after Halo 3, and I clearly remember a lot of my PS3 owning friends that this game was going to kick ass. No one got it though, and it quickly fell off the face of the earth. All I can remember is the reviews covering the title were far less than stellar. I remember watching an X-Play review of the game and just, it just remembered it getting completely bashed upon too. But I never got too much of that review, I never really saw it, I only saw a bit and a piece of it. So I never got the whole gist of what this game was really about or why people hated it. All I can remember is again, the reviews were not great <laughs> and you can look them up now, it's pretty bad. But it was actually dubbed by many to be the worst PS3 game ever and that seems like hyperbole. And I wanted to put that to the test. I mean, I've played bad games, and I've played bad PS3 games. So how bad could this one really be? Well, one late night, I went onto Amazon. I searched for a copy of Haze. And I found it. Really cheap. I got it for a penny. Minus the shipping and handling that Amazon tax on, I ended up receiving my copy a week later, and I was excited. I fired up the good old capture card and my PlayStation and was dedicated to finishing this game, which I did. Three and a half hours later. Yeah. It was that short. And that short, my god, did I realize. I just beat the Halo Killer. In under four hours. I felt like hot shit. I partied that night. But the Lamborghinis and 420s only go so far. I realized just how stupid this fucking game was. Let's go into the story side. You start the game as Shane Carpenter who works for Mantle, a private military group, I guess, I, I don't know. They own so many things in the game and apparently they own like everything. It's the Illuminati, okay? Let, let's, just, let's just refer to them as the Illuminati for all intents and purposes. 
It's a group that drugs up its soldiers on honey, sorry, nectar. We'll go to that in a little bit too. This nectar allows you to heighten every ability. You get super speed, you get super melee, you get perfect aim, take too much and you lose your mind and go crazy for a few seconds, but it's not like it matters in gameplay land because you just don't get to reload and you constantly shoot. Cool, but you still kill stuff. You end up fighting your way to arrest some doctor or evil warlord or something called Menrino. After you capture Menrino, you realize that the nectar itself somehow hides the horrors of war from you when you don't use it. You see the world for what it really is. I don't know, man. It's a little too spooky, so let's move on. Once arresting Menrino, you find your friends are complete a-holes. And if you haven't figured this out already, I mean, let's be fair, the first 15 minutes you already hate everyone you're working with, so it's not that big of a shock. You're an ape, a monkey, doing whatever those chemicals tell you to do. And once you accept that, you can take control of yourself instead. You calling me a fag? Don't call him a fag, sir. Empty hand is just a grip away from holding a gun. So? You gotta take them down before they can pick it up. Boosh! You wake up in a forest and you run through it and you find that mantle wants you dead because your honey isn't infecting you and you can see the world for what it really is. And then you join the resistance even though you've killed half of their unit and I don't know where they're just cool, join us, let's fight alongside each other. You go to this boat, you uncover the truth for what it really is from somebody in your old unit because apparently they dialed back your the honey meters or something and you just saw the world for what it really was and you had a conscience or something. You realize that in order to stop all of this honey problem you have to go to this observatory owned by Mantle or run by them at least and before you do that you have to do some stupid shantytown defense mission because they gotta pad out the gameplay anyways. I mean the game is less than four hours. After that, once you completely destroy the observatory, you think it's over then, but no, the torture still continues. You have to go to this, you have to, you have to go to this giant mobile super base where your game initially began, and after you take that down, <laughs> the story is over. Um, and you might be wondering, why is it just short synopsis? Why did I go through? I don't know, man. The story's awful. Some shit like that. Honestly, I had to rewatch the footage I recorded to even truly grasp this. Convoluted story, not even convoluted, it's just... Ugh. The story, first and foremost, is not anything to write home about, let's be honest here. And let's talk about why this is a bad game, why it is possibly the worst PS3 game. Honestly, probably toss it in there as the worst PS3 game. I played all of Hades, it's bad. The game, again, story is bad, the graphics are laughably bad, and remember, this console can do games like Uncharted or The Last of Us and Metal Gear Solid 4, and when you take Haze against the game it's trying to uh, fight against, Halo 3 released almost a year earlier by the way, yeah, night and day difference, night and day difference, even when you compare it to Call of Duty 4, night and day difference. Halo runs with a solid frame rate while this run... I'll, I'll be honest, this game chugs bad, and again, for no real reason. It's not great graphically, the AI isn't demanding, it's, it's just crapping itself for no reason. It's not like it's a multi-plat, it, it's only on the PS3, I mean, come on! Then you have what pisses me off the most. The Nectar System. Yeah, the defining feature of the game. You only get it for two levels. I get that it's a bad thing, but when the game trailer specifically shoved the honey in your face, you think, man, I'll get it for more than two levels, but you don't. And once you become the rebel faction, it plays like a generic shooter. Your ability becomes this play dead thing, which is so overpowered. Because every time you get into an encounter, you get this play dead prompt, and as soon as you hit it, you feign death. And everything runs past you because they can't see dead bodies because of the honey. I don't get it. But then it's so overpowered because a second later you can get back up with full health and commit killing. And even when your health gets low again, you just feign your death. That's it. The game is so easy. You don't actually do anything. And before my voice gets even higher pitched, we're going to dial it down. So in the end, it never becomes a Halo killer. It's more evident that it rivals Call of Duty, but even then... When you compare it to Call of Duty 4 at the time, which is the Call of Duty game that came out, it still loses horribly. That game has far superior set pieces and gameplay, and say whatever you will about Call of Duty, but it's a far better game than Hayes was. So in the end, it never wins against anything, and honestly, it seems like it shouldn't even have ever been pitted against anything at all. And there was no real reason to even get hyped for it. And really, that's what killed it. Free Radical, the developers behind the game, wasted so many features. Wanted so many, rather 
for this title. Originally, it was going to be a third-person game, and it was to feature some really good artificial intelligence. Not the crap you see in the game, but apparently pre-production was going to have some crazy good AI that reacts to the environment and everything around it. And because Ubisoft picked it up, they wanted to make it more mainstream to compete with other titles, again, Halo and Call of Duty, it failed to do so in the end. And honestly, I can't really even blame Ubisoft for all of it, because let's be honest, with a game this bad in the state that it was released, what honest to god good base could it really have had purely in the hands of Free Radical? I tried to find one redeeming quality, and honestly I couldn't. It had a boring single player, a lack of any real weapons, crappy gameplay, awful sound, and honestly the biggest kick to the nuts. The final boss fight. I want you all to watch this final boss fight, okay? Because I swear, I my mind was blown, dude. I, I, I was shocked, okay? I was spooked. It's like seeing a skeleton for the first time in your life. Just watch it. Where do you think you're taking this thing? All these fucking animals were too chicken shit to take control of themselves. So now I'm the captain. And I can go wherever the fuck I want. You're not going anywhere. Just, just stop. It's too late for you to come back to my family. You killed my boys. You're not on Nectar now. You, you don't have to be crazy anymore. You can be normal. What's crazy? How about I train to fight for a cause? I forge a bond with my fellow soldiers. Swear to follow orders, but then betray them and kill my friends on a whim. How about that? That sounds pretty crazy to me. I never did anything but try to protect you. But you take one knock on the head, and suddenly the world's wrong and you're right. Normality, buddy, is purely statistical. If 99 out of 100 people act one way, that's normal. It's majority rule. So you're the abnormal one, buddy. You are! There's only two of us here now. So which one of us is normal? Whichever one of us survives. Fuck you. You're insane! That's it! That was literally all the game did for its final encounter. All you got was that. My god. It's like they knew it was awful and they just wanted it to be over for the suffering player behind it. The voice acting is just abysmal as well. I mean, it made Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil, look like it had some emblance of people caring behind that. Just listen to Hayes. Every character is just so bare bones. No one cares and it hurts. These wounds, they do not heal. Not even with the nectar. It's just a prank, bro. But in all honesty, before we even end the video off, and the reason why I wanted to make this in the first place, again, to show you guys a really crappy game, because, hey, I showed you guys Vampire Rain, the worst game on the 360, also on the PSC, but we were talking about the 360 version there, and I figured to be uh, pretty equal and fair, I might as well cover Sony's crappy games too. What really aggravates me is Hayes could have potentially been a good game. It was anti-war, and those games are somewhat rare in amidst the, you know, typical modern military shooters out there, but even comparing it to other anti-war games, if you take Spec Ops The Line, that game is brilliant with its anti-war message. I love Spec Ops The Line. This game does not match up to Spec Ops at all, not even a little bit. But with the original gameplay that it was kind of touting, I mean, if you look some of it up, it was it was promising. It could have been great. But the hype 
that was building around it killed it. The shift of focus that this game had is what truly de destroyed it. And I think that it destroys any game. It's not just Haze. There are so many other games like this that go through a similar phase, trying to kill whatever's popular, whatever has, you know, their shit together. And at that point, it ruins that game entirely. It's a death of a game that could have been good, and that's what aggravates me as a gamer the most. And one example that I do want to throw about this is it could have been great if it did the Splinter Cell route. Again, another game by Ubisoft, too, so it's kind of a weird coincidence. But for those of you who don't know what Splinter Cell is, it's sort of the American Metal Gear. Now, Metal Gear at the time is, Metal Gear still, is a pillar in the stealth action franchise. In fact, its games have been some of the most highest rated video game titles out there. Even the spin-offs have gained rapid success. It, it is a franchise with a very good track record. But what Splinter Cell did was not compete against it by becoming a Metal Gear killer. No, what Splinter Cell did was it, it did its own thing. It created its own style of gameplay. It created its own sort of unique world. It has a, it had its own flair to it. You know, if you play Splinter Cell, you'll notice that it does things better than Metal Gear at time too. And honestly, I gotta say, as a franchise, it stands toe to toe. When you play Splinter Cell, you know, Chaos Theory, in my opinion, is as good as Metal Gear Solid 3. And some people can beg to differ all they want, but both games are absolutely brilliant. They both tap into their respective genres absolutely well. And Splinter Cell could have tried to rip off Metal Gear, but instead, both franchises playfully acknowledge each other in a very, you know, funny light. They both know that each other exists, and they complement one another. Splinter Cell does things better than Metal Gear at some points, and vice versa. And that's how I think game franchises should exist. If you go the Haze route and don't know what the hell you're doing at the end, whether you're trying to rip off Halo or Call of Duty, then you end up getting a package that is just completely awful. And to be selling it for full price is just downright abysmal. I mean, I got it for a penny. <laughs> and I think that's paying a little too much for Haze. I feel like I should have been paid for Haze. But that being said, it's well after the fact. Again, one redeeming quality before I finish it off, uh, I think I have found it though, is that the game does have bot multiplayer, considering the actual multiplayer servers are long dead. You can actually play the 16 player multiplayer mode by yourself and somebody you kidnap via split screen even though I haven't gotten split screen to work at all. Is it worth it? <laughs> no, because the multiplayer sucks. Once again, it could have been a great title. and. Like I mentioned Killzone earlier in the video, Killzone 1 was a game that just did not have an interesting single player at all, and the multiplayer from a few matches I played it were okay, nothing great, it was okay. It was until the second title, which, again, people said could have been Sony's Halo killer, it, it, it actually didn't try to even kill Halo, it was its own game and it was a brilliant one of that, and if anything, instead of Haze, maybe you should get Killzone 2, because that game not only has bots, but it has an amazing multiplayer component to it. And the single player, although a little bland in my taste, it's still a far better experience than Haze could ever think it could reach. But that being said, I do recommend you still buy Haze. It's even for a penny. It's just worth having for the lulls itself. It is a funny, funny game for all the wrong reasons. And without making this video stretch past too long, I'm going to end it right here, asking you a simple question. What you thought about Haze? Was it good? Probably not. But if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and uh, I gotta take some nectar.